Welcome everyone to the Radio Shack Thermal Compound Tube Show. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wrong channel. Nope, this is the John Audio Tech channel. There's probably a Radio Shack Thermal Compound Tube channel somewhere on YouTube if you look for it. There's just about anything else. But here on the John Audio Tech Show, we're going to take a look at this charger, this dual port car charger. Charger D Voit your double port. I'm sure I butchered that pretty badly. 2.1 amp. They had to get that 0.1 amp in there. Two ports. Bought this at the Dollar Tree a couple weeks ago. It's been sitting around waiting for a review. A couple years ago I did a uh, that little round speaker, the E-Circuit round speaker. And another channel, V Westlife, just did a review of that. It's kind of interesting how they changed parts inside of it. The one I reviewed had a, a metal speaker with a big magnet. But even so, I thought the speaker in the one on V Westlife sounded a little better than mine. But I digress. Yeah, so we have this car charger here. Greenbrier International. They seem to import a lot of products for the Dollar Tree. What I'm going to do is tear this thing down. Probably a one-way tear down because I have to do some soldering. And run it through the ringer of test here to see, well, for one thing, can it really support its rating here. And we'll go from there. Here is the device out of the packaging. I don't know how close I can get in on that. I don't notice any screws, so it's all snapped together plastics. So I'll have to tear this thing open to see what's on the insides. Okay, got into this thing. Just had tabs on the plastic cover here. But this part was glued together. And here is the circuit board that I just dropped. And yeah, it's built down to a cost, that's for sure. First thing I noticed, there is no protective fuse on the input. Next thing I noticed, there's two electrolytic capacitors, one across the output, one across the input, but you see these unpopulated pads here. Well these are for the ceramic capacitors that would be in parallel with those capacitors. In other words, they're also across the input and the output. That could mean increased noise or decreased stability from the circuit. It's a pretty good idea to have though. That's why they're there on the board, but they neglected to put them on there. Another thing I see is a toroidal type core. Heavy enough windings that should be uh, plenty for the current. So that's a good thing there. Uh, this looks like a resistor and an LED across the output to indicate that it's working. One thing I don't see on this board is the switching diode that handles the current generated from the collapsing magnetic field of this coil. See the output transistor is switching on and off. When it switches off the magnetic field in the coil collapses and generates a current which is forward biasing that diode and it produces current for the output. I've heard it called an efficiency diode or a flyback diode, but it's not in the circuit here. That means it's a synchronous type converter and in the case of a synchronous converter in place of that diode is another transistor so when the main transistor shuts off, they turn on this other transistor and it conducts that collapsing, and I should say it conducts the current generated from the collapsing magnetic field. 
because you can make MOSFETs with such a low on-state resistance, the voltage drop across the device is even lower than that of a Schottky diode, which is 0.2 or 0.3 volts. And that results in higher efficiency, so that's why they do that. Okay, yeah, so it is a very minimalist circuit here. And they cut corners, leaving some parts off. So now, let's hook this thing up and see if it can handle its rated current. Okay, I hooked it up to the power supply. I almost hooked the negative up to this red wire because they're using red where normally this is negative or black or blue or some other color, but that's just the way they do things. So I soldered some leads on so I can easily put resistors across the output. Okay, I'll try to uh, keep my hands out of the way and measure across the resistor terminals. 4.9 volts. I have a 25 ohm load, so that's a pretty light load. I'll take that off now. Uh, see how stable it is with no load. Well, actually, that LED there, which is blue, is the only load on it when it's not connected to anything. It says 5.1 volts. Actually, when it is loaded, I measure here, it's 5.1. There is some loss in these connections. But it's hard to get the meter on those without shorting something out on the tiny circuit board. Okay, so now we'll go up to whatever the current is with a 4 ohm resistor. Uh, we'll say 5 divided by 4 ohms. 1.25 amps four point eight I'm going to try anyway I'll probably short something out try to get the voltage measured here five point one so yeah it's pretty steady there. I remember doing a video on one of these. I think it was rated 1 amp. It just had one port on it and it cut out around half an amp. I'm starting to lose regulation. Uh, let's see if I can get my scope on here. I just wonder what kind of noise we're getting. <sighs> yeah, there we go. At 50 millivolts per division, yeah, getting about 100 millivolts peak to peak, and it's jumping around there, around 140 kilohertz signal. Well, I think I popped it. It was working fine with the 4 ohm resistor. I added an 8 ohm resistor in parallel, which equals about 2.666 ohms which would be a current of 1.8 or so and it was working fine there it was keeping it regulated at uh, about 5.1 volts then I turned it off because this was getting really hot and added a 25 ohm resistor you know compared to this it's slightly more I just wanted to bring it up to you know a little over two amps like the package states 2.1 amps so let's see that's five volts divided by 2.4 that's the value with all three of these resistors together so it'd be 2.08 that's pretty close to 2.1 I turned this thing on and it wasn't working it's drawing heavy current out of my supply see if I turn it on it's uh, maxed out here, 1.5 ohm. You know, I'm back to the two resistors where I was drawing 1.8. And in doing that, I was only drawing about 0.8 of an amp. Now it just maxes out no matter what. So I think it's dead. Let me check a couple things and come right back. 
Well, I guess I didn't kill it. I removed all the loads, turned it on, and it's working again. No way there was a short. It'd be hard to short the way that's set up. But let me see if I can get a measurement here. Got all three resistors on there. 5.1 volts. So it's at its maximum current and it's holding it. So yeah, the thing actually works. How hot did it get? It's a little warm, but nothing extreme. That meter wants to turn off. Yeah, I was running it for quite a while before and it didn't really get very warm. So yeah, this is actually doing the business. Would I trust it with my expensive phone or tablet or whatever? Eh, probably not. It's it's a little rinky-dink to me. If the uh, transistor in this chip decides to short out, it'll bring the full voltage, you know, whatever your car voltage is, 12.6 uh, volts or 14 volts with the engine running. It'll send that right on through to your uh, device and could damage it. So, yeah, I don't really trust these cheap chargers. And for the final battery of test, I will see how it maintains the output voltage. If I crank the power supply voltage up higher, we're at 13 and a half. We'll take it to 16 volts, 17 volts. Probably shouldn't go higher. I'm, I have to see what the value of that uh, input capacitor is. It might be a 16 volt cap, so I shouldn't go any higher than that. So now I'll take the voltage down. I am running with the 4 ohm load, so about 1.25 amps. And we're down to 9 volts. 8 volts. 7 volts. Looks like it dropped a little bit, maybe. Or not. It's starting to change now. Yeah, it dropped out. Of course, I'm at 5 volts on the power supply now. Let me go back up to where it drops out. Around 6 volts. Yeah, it drops out around 6 volts. Let me turn it back up to 13 and a half. And the final test is the short circuit test. Will it survive or will it pop? Let me uh, turn the current all the way up on the power supply. 3.2 amps. I'm shorting it. Whoa, thing was screeching there. Okay, something happened. Whoa! It popped! <laughs> I popped it! Well, so much for short circuit protection. <laughs> it let out the magic smoke. Well, let's see what happens. I took this capacitor off. It looks like it swelled up and pushed the little rubber bung out the bottom here. Uh, let's see what happens now. Uh, nothing. I turn it on. Dead shorts my supply out. It's just a dead short. Yeah, the chip must be shorted out inside. Well, I guess that's the end of that. Well, that was pretty interesting to test. Thanks for watching. An 8 ohm resistor in parallel.